Hey, so in today's video, we're going to have a look at how to parallel process in Ableton. And the way you would normally do this on consoles back in the day is you would have one track with your dry unprocessed signal, and then you would send a copy of that onto its separate return track. And there you would have just the wet signal. You know, you could have a reverb or a compressor, just exaggerate the effect, and then you could blend those two in and each track would have its own separate fader. But for some of us, and that includes myself, that is not the ideal way to do this. Let me actually show you. So let me actually show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to open up a project here in Ableton. And as you can see by default, I have two return tracks here to the right. They already come with a reverb and a delay plugin on them. But suppose I wanted to use parallel compression on a drum bus. I want to have one dry signal of the drums and then one fully compressed signal to blend the two together. To do that, I would have to give up one of my two return tracks, which is not ideal because maybe I want to preserve them for reverb and delay, right? So luckily there is a way to do this on one single track. So you don't have to give up any of your returns and I'm going to show you how to do just that. So let's get rid of these extra tracks here. Let's get rid of our returns as well. We're not going to use them. So I have a MIDI track here. Let's use one of Ableton's stock clips here, like the first one we have here. A nice 505 clip. I'm going to drag it here and as you can see Ableton has already dragged the corresponding instrument onto the MIDI track as well. But it would be the same thing if you had just an audio clip, right? In fact, let's get rid of all of this. Let's simplify our view here a little bit. Good. So this is our drum track here. So how do you parallel process here? How do you keep one dry, unscathed copy of this and then a separate, fully processed copy of it? Well, you use a thing called uh, an audio rack effect, which you can find under audio effects. So let's drag it in there and we want to show the chain list and the chain is what it is. It's an effect chain. You can also leave it without any effects. So you see where this is going. We're going to create two chains and the first one, we won't do anything to it. It's just going to be our dry signal. And the second one is going to have our super process signal. Now, first, let's just focus on the process chain. So I'm going to mute the first chain. And as you can see, you can pen them independently. You can also change the volume of them. It's just like having a track just dedicated to that chain, but it's within one single track, which is extra cool if you're on Ableton Live light like I am, because you have that eight track limit. And this is one of the tricks to kind of work around that. So let's say we wanted to create a fake drum room sound, right? So I'm going to grab an instance of my reverb here, drag it onto the second chain and set the dry wet knob to 100%. And uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because because it's not the purpose of the video, but just bear with me for a little bit, maybe a couple seconds. Let's see if we can set this up to sound a bit like a drum room. Now that's not too bad already. Let's just tweak some of the parameters here. You know, something like that. It's not perfect, but you know, it will do. And what you would usually do with a nice room mic on an actual drum kit, not on a drum machine like this, is you would compress the crud out of it. So, you know, 1176 style compression. Let's see if we can get something similar going with Ableton's compressor here. Again, I'm just going to tweak some parameters here, set it to peak. Don't want any knee. Let's just hear what it sounds like. Yeah, just to bring out even more of that fake room kind of sound. So here's with and without compression. Way more aggressive for sure. It's very dirty. So, you know, we would need to tweak this some more to make it sound good, but you got the point. So we have our separate, let's call it compressed room chain here, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to activate the first chain again. That's the dry signal. Then I'm going to turn down the volume of my room. And I'm going to slowly blend it in and see kind of where the sweet spot is. You know, something like that, maybe. And you might say, well, why don't you just slap the reverb onto the drum track and set maybe the dry wet knob to 50%. Um, the problem with that is, well, if the only effect you wanted to apply was the reverb, then sure, go for it. But if we were to just slap the reverb onto the track and then the compressor, that compressor would affect both the reverb and the dry signal, right? You wouldn't be able to just affect the process signal. And in a similar fashion, let's say we wanted to EQ just the dry 
signal a bit. Well, I can just move to our dry chain here, grab an EQ, slap it on there. And now that EQ is only going to affect the dry portion of the signal and not do anything to the wet portion with our reverb. So this kind of a setup gives you way more flexibility because it allows you to target those portions of the signal, be it the dry one or the wet one, which you actually want to affect and not the signal as a whole, as a mix of the two. So yeah, that was pretty much it. I hope this was useful. If so, let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, shoot me a comment as well. Always happy to help. And, uh, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that really helps this channel grow. It tells the YouTube algorithm that this is valuable content and maybe it should recommend it to more people. So, you know, I uh, would really appreciate if you could do that. And uh, yeah, that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.